Thank you for tuning in to Nantucket Small Business Update. This week's edition is with Christy Farentel, the president of the chamber, and Amy Baxter, the licensing administrator of Nantucket. And we're going to get uh, a lot of updates from Christy and talk to Amy about everything licensing, which is uh, a big deal right now, uh, whether you're restaurant, retail, anybody on Nantucket wants to know what's going on. And so I want to make sure I got the live chat on. Let me refresh that. And so, uh, we'll st Christy, we'll start with you. But just so the public knows that if anybody wants to put in a, a live chat or comment, we are watching that. Is that live? I believe it is, right? Just want to make sure. I can't see it, but uh, I'll, I will refresh and look. So, Christy, do you want to give us an update of what's going on? Of course. Um, so a lot has changed since last week. I know last week when we talked about the federal stimulus, uh, it was currently on hold and we were waiting for additional funding. Uh, this past weekend, President Trump did sign in additional funding through the CARES Act. Um, so that has put in more money into the PPP program, the Paycheck Protection Program. And those applications uh, were, they went live yesterday at 10.30. So you go through your local lender, uh, so go through your local bank, Nantucket Bank, Cape Cod Five, um, Bank of America, and submit your application through then, them. Um, they are receiving applications faster this time around after realizing that they ran out of funding. So we're encouraging everybody to apply as quickly as possible. Um, they did uh, add additional funding to the EIDL loan, the EIDL. Mm -hmm. Right now, those applications are not open. Um, they're still fielding all the previous applications. Um, so if you've applied previously, um, kind of around the March 15th date, um, they're still going through all of those and funding those. And then um, as soon as they have room for new applications, the chamber will be the first one to put that information out. Thank you, Christy. Quick question for you. The, of the people that applied the first round for PPP loans, are most of them getting them? Is it half? What, what's your, what, what are you hearing out there? I've, I've only heard people are getting them. I haven't heard of anybody being denied so far. Okay. Um, I know that the banks were processing the first round first before they're entering the new round. Um, I, I know that with Nantucket Bank, they've been process, processing them as fast as possible, and people are getting their funding within 10 days. I've heard the same thing with Cape Cod 5. I know Bank of America is... Um, is, is held up, held up with the number of applications, but they are going as fast as possible. Okay, and the um, the the idle loans. I, I applied for that for one of my small businesses. I've not even heard anything except for that quick notification that you got back as soon as you hit submit. Are you hearing that businesses are getting? Uh, is that happening here on Nantucket? Yes. Um, so they're not giving you any notification when they give you your advancement. So part of this program is um, upwards of $10,000 as a cash advancement, and it's based on the number of employees. They're just distributing it into your account. And so I, we've been encouraging businesses to just check your account every day because um, you're not getting any sort of uh, feedback or email or any sort of confirmation. It's just going straight through. That's going to be a nice surprise if it does happen for you. Yes. Um, and when you do get the actual loan part, you will, you'll, they'll have conversations and you'll get an email about that. Thank you. So that's the, the PPP loans and the idle loans. Yeah. Another big update today is governor Baker has extended the stay at home order through May 18th. Um, so that's fielding a lot of questions, um, kind of how are we going to move forward, which is what this show is all about. Mm -hmm. What are you hearing most um, since last Tuesday, since we did this, this, uh, the last show, what are most of the inquiries you're getting coming into the chamber? Most questions are about how people can reopen. So not just kind of when can I reopen, but how can I start the process to be ready? And so many people want to know, you know, which town department should I be working with? Or is this going to come from the governor? Kind of what research can they be doing? Um, a, lot of, a lot of the questions are just how can I help so I'm prepared? And businesses are getting to the point where you know, they're very, they do, they want to do the right thing and they want to make sure that they're complying with everything, but they're also getting a little impatient that it's been slow, so slow moving and no word from the governor was very tough. So at least today we have 
a glimpse. I, I wouldn't say that I'm happy with the results, um, but at least we know that it is extended. We can start planning. We can start working with town admin. Um, I know, Jason, you're chairing the economic recovery task force or whatever we're going to call it. So at least I think things are moving um, and we'll start to have some answers soon. Right. Well, that's a great segue into uh, with, with you, Amy, because if, if people are starting to shift from, okay, I'm not going to focus on the when because it's so uncertain. How can I attach onto the how so I can start planning? And this is, you've been, uh, I've gotten great compliments from uh, restaurants, different people in the business community on your proactive approach and how you've been reaching out uh, to everyone. Yeah. Well, thank you. They've they've been great too, and we understand the frustration. As as Roberto loves to say, um, the virus sets a timeline, which everyone's been saying, and we share the frustration too. This isn't a case where we are trying to develop something that we have any background on. It is a day by day process. And and again, when the governor came out today, I was happy he finally said something. I was shocked that they were putting together the advisory committee today. I thought that had been going on. So that was a bit of a, okay. So what we've been doing is, I think we can identify some general areas that we're gonna have to consider. All the guidance will come from the state. We do have to, um, once that comes down, help people uh, evolve their plans and operations to deal with the state. The state makes the decision and the town will take that in and make, um, you know, adapt if we have to. But um, we know that there will be occupancy reductions for those businesses that take the public in, restaurants, theaters. Um, like we mentioned earlier, we're watching some of the states that are opening early. Uh, Texas, I believe, opened pretty early and they were allowing theaters and such to open, but at 25% occupancy. So whatever your maximum occupancy is, it's a 25% number from there. And we're working with building and others to determine how we will figure that out because something like that will come. We know there will be six foot social distancing through the summer. Um, whether that's, you know, inside a restaurant or places with tables, whether it's, you know, allowing folks into retail stores, things of that sort. Um, we know there will be health protocols. Restaurants will probably have to deal with um, no walk-ins at first. Again, he's talking phases. We're getting used to that word, phases. They will be slow phases of opening. So even with a plan on May 18th, there's no um, switch that we're going to flip. It'll be a slow, gradual roll into that. So, you know, what I'm trying to tell people is we can kind of determine what some of the factors will be. Try to think of a 25%, a 50% occupancy reduction, how you do distancing between your tables. A lot of folks can't remove tables. We, they don't have rooms to store them. We don't want to create a fire hazard. So we saw in some places um, down south, they were Xing out certain tables. So they had that kind of setup going as well. Um, hash marks for folks reservation systems. Some folks don't have that available. Reservation can be a week before or it can be sitting in your car going, hey, do you have a, a table available? We just don't want to queue people in large groups. So it's thinking about how your operation and how your flow goes with a lot of those considerations. Um, and again, watching the whole world's going through this, watching other countries, watching those states that are opening up, I think a little too early, but watching what they're going through. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. Um, and I didn't want the one thing I know we talked about too, a lot of folks saw with the construction order and things coming down, thinking we're sitting here just coming up with these little points to uh, put for reopening. They're not, they're gonna come from the state. And then we're going to work, we're going to ask each, you know, establishment to kind of develop a plan that works best for them and we'll work with them. Um, and then one other thing too, from our perspective that we're doing is considering how this new operation is going to affect the town. How is it going to affect parking downtown? How are folks going to be able to pick up food uh, for delivery or for pickup? Because regardless of opening, that model will continue into the summer. Some folks won't want to go out. Some won't be able to get in because of these reduced occupancies. How can the town support that? Um, you know, maybe expanding spaces outdoors. How do we consider that? Um, so we're working with that, asking the state if we can consider that because there's a long process. We are so seasonal that I feel like this is really hitting us harder. Um, so we have to consider that. A lot of large events, which is another thing we deal with in licensing, um, aren't happening this year. So how do we shift our resources? And 
You know, I'm a long time event planner. To me, this is a new event. What are all the dominoes that are going to fall when these things happen? So I think that's how we're approaching it. And we very much want to work with the restaurants, with the businesses and understand how they need to adapt and how we need to shift. So, um, Amy, can I stop you for a second? So, um, the, you're saying, um, would it be safe to say for planning purposes, and I'm sure a lot of restaurants and businesses are already doing this to plan on why your business looks like at 25% occupancy, 50% occupancy, 75% occupancy. Now 75 is probably, you know, way down the road, but to have all these plans and then, and with the six foot, you know, kind of social distancing, Yes. Should we start planning that? And should, for someone who has a little coffee shop, should I plan to not even have anybody come in for some time? Right? Like, what yeah. does that look like? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And that's how every, all these folks are great at planning and, and understand the flow of a restaurant, flow of their business and understand that. So it is, and I've asked them that. We know that there will be some sort of occupancy reduction. How do you, are we going to have to consider wait lines outside in, you know, hash marks outside on sidewalks. We're considering that as a town, does that happen too? So you have to put these scenarios in. I don't want people to get too tied to some of these details just yet because there was some concern about reservations and some restaurants don't operate that way. They operate on people walking in, hey, you got a seat at the bar, you got a seat at this. And that's okay. It's not a strict, you need to call a week ahead. Like I said, it could be in your car as you leave the house and you do those sorts of things. You have a text message system, you know, your table's ready and people can come in, you know, in that first phase. How does it work for you? I don't want people to get stuck on the one term maybe we put in there. Um, party sizes, again, they might limit the time a party can have two hours. Um, originally, they put in two seatings a night and the restaurants came back and said, whoa, that'll bunch people up. Great. That's great feedback. You mm -hmm. know, we saw the advisory committee. There's um, several restaurant people and for the state level. There's a local um, people on there too as well. So I, I feel good that they will have those considerations in mind um, as well. So it's a very much give and take because the frustrating part for us has been all this uncertainty. Folks come to officials for answers and we don't have them. You know, we're learning as well with everyone else and that's been hard for us so um i'm hoping the give and take is going to help and and we'll continue to do that because we're all kind of on this ride together at this point uh in time so that's kind of where we are with that i think that's a really important point to make is we've been kind of fielding questions from restaurants and so i know amy and i have been talking a lot and it's so much about getting the input from the restaurants and making sure that everybody is part of the discussion um, so I think we've done a really good job of fielding it, and Amy's done a great job of trying to go back and see what the regulations might be in other states or how we could adapt to Nantucket. And I always say that I hate saying this, that we're unique, but I think this is going to be one of those times where we really look at how do we adapt to Nantucket. And I know Amy's been working, like you said, on parking plans and opening up streets, and there's things that we're thinking about, and this is the time to think outside the box and how do we kind of have a summer and support our small businesses whilst maintaining social distancing and making sure everybody's safe. Yes. Yeah. And I, as you said, the closing streets there, just want to say to Chief Pittman, I haven't promised anything. Um, we're having the conversation about, you know, what, what does it look like and what do we need to plan for, again, for people to, you know, pick up things and such. And then we're moving on to events and things of that sort as well. I think, uh, you know, we're going to get some more seasonal restaurants uh, open or operational in the next few weeks uh, during this time, luckily. So there'll be more offerings for people for takeout and things like that. Um, and so we're also, you know, the hospitality industry is so large here and such really kind of the beating heart, I feel, um, of the island and why people come here. So, you know, we're getting into events. I don't want to leave them out events and catering and, you know, weddings and things of that sort. So, um, that is also part of the focus. I've brought them into the conversation with restaurants because it all works together. Those things are going to affect weddings or events and tents or events at the whaling museum or the theater or function areas and things of that sort too. So it's, it's going to be hard because I don't know how you social distance a wedding. So things like that um, are difficult, but 
we've all had the conversation. I think a lot of people, uh, the pops are using this too, but reimagine normal. We need to let go of normal because that's left the building. It's not with us at the moment. So how do we move into this new reality and how can we still do this? Um, a lot of people are postponing, but some are doing virtual things. What, what else can we do? Cause it's going to be a while, um, before we have that sort of just gather for any reason kind of situation. So, um, that's where we're at is trying to get people to reimagine different things. And then, then we can come in and say how we can kind of help with that as well. So I don't know if there's any questions on that, but I just have a comment being a, yeah. a, a owner of two small, tiny, small businesses yeah. here on Nantucket. I think the planning I'm, I've been planning, uh, my rear off, you know, at yeah. not having anybody allowed in my coffee shop, what does social distancing look like on a bike tour, you know, and you plan and you plan and a plan, but you don't want to make too many financial moves. Like I don't want, I don't want to buy a reservation, like a new reservation system quite yet, or I don't want to buy new tables quite yet. Cause I'm not sure lots of different reasons, but you know, will the town work with this? Just, let's just use my business. For example, well, I'd be allowed to put in four or five, two tops outside of the coffee shop, right? Well, will that be allowed? And so we're, everybody's kind of waiting to pull the trigger and, you know, spending money on anything. Um, so it's, it's, you know, we're in a tough space as we want to know the how, and we're, I think we've accepted that the wind's going to be, is out of our control. Yeah, and absolutely. And we're, we're having daily conversations too. And I'm going to probably go ahead and say, we'll try to keep it along the same timeline the state has for some of these orders too, and try to think about what some of those plans are. Obviously the first thing about expanding premises, I think about liquor because there's such tough laws against that. So I'm working with the state. Hopefully they will give us some flexibility, you know, sandbar jetties or galley that, you know, it's a little bit easier to think about expanding their space because it's easy to do. Other spots, not so much. How does that look? How do we help them stay in business and operate and make it? Because for some, they look at these restrictions and go, why bother? It's not worth it. So is there a way that we can kind of help with that? So it is a constant conversation. And again, it's a day by day um, situation. And I've got a list of events here and things coming up to try to consider um, how that will work. So all I can say is, is we're working on that constantly and paying attention and try to shift, but the town is definitely reconsidering how all of these things work in the summer. Um, because, you know, a lot of these large events and festivals are either postponed indefinitely or have canceled or gone virtual. So what's our new event? You know, is it the restaurants? It's, it's different things. It's virtual tours. What is it? Um, so we can keep Nantucket alive and safe and in a new way. So I, I can say we're constantly working on it, but again, the timeline is tough. It's hard for me. I get questions. Can I have my wedding in September? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that far out right now. What I tell a lot of these events is that you need to understand your internal timeline. You need to understand how long you can reasonably go um, before you make other plans, before you cancel, do you have deposits due? How many people are involved? Where are they traveling from? We don't know, and we can't guarantee until we're allowed to have more public gatherings or guidance on it. It's going to be it's going to be a while, but we can't even answer those questions. They need to understand personally, you must on private property, what their timeline is, how long they can actually wait. Um, so I'm trying to guide them through that, but unfortunately I don't have absolute answers on a lot of these things. So it's a, it's just a constant conversation, uh, right now, which is exhausting. I know, I know because everyone's scared and, and, and uncertain. So, but, uh, kind of, we all are. I yeah. Think, I, think, but, I think so many people are, are questioning what, you know, June through December is going to look like on Nantucket. And, you know, none of us have a crystal ball and we're trying to take it, you know, one week at a time and trying to figure out kind of how to stay in the right now, but also plan for the future. Um, so I, I do know that Jason um, is going to be chairing that economic recovery task force. And part of that is really going to be looking at different benchmarks. So what does Nantucket look like in one month, three months, six months, 12 months? And we're just, we're all going to have to work together um, between town and small businesses and the whole island to to really put together these plans. Right, 
And we feel we know if we're stricter now, we hopefully are less likely for another spike or another round where we have to deal with this again and again. I tell folks, even if we feel we're coming out of it, we might have to be ready for something else we wanted that's why i want to be careful so it doesn't trigger some other outbreak some other issue um but i you know my sense is we just are kind of kind of roll with this throughout the year so we need to kind of deal with it that way and understand what those timelines are i kind of I look at it as i thought of this the other day the um march madness brackets that you look at in basketball you've got all your players and all your variables and all the different levels to get to the end and until you play through it, you don't know who fits where or what's going on. So we've got all the players and all the teams and all the levels. We just have to keep kind of going through it till we start filling those blanks in. And that's kind of how it is in my head right now as we kind of shift in through these players. So um, so we just we got to play some games here and uh, figure out uh, how to move forward. You had to bring up March Madness, didn't you? <laughs> well, madness seems like a good word. Favorite time, the favorite time of the whole year. <laughs> well, reimagine it. I kind of repressed it in back of my memory. I know. I know. I'm, watching, I'm watching old um, NBA finals from like 2000 and 2016 and I'm trying to find old world, world series that I can watch. I'm serious. I, I know. Instagram, I watch the old sports shows. Uh, our, you know, I, one thing I was thinking, was sitting here listening to uh, both of you is Nantucket businesses can be really creative. Just, just small businesses can move fast, and we are a community of small businesses. And then you put in kind of the Nantucket factor, how we all we have to think differently anyway by being 26 miles out to sea, right? We have to plan differently because it's going to be windy, and we're not going to get the food we need for the big catering job. So we're just, we're always creative. So I know whatever parameters come out, mm -hmm. we'll be creative with, within that system. And I just, I want, uh, and I'm going to try to encourage all town entities and everybody to work within that creativity because I know they'll be, they'll be safe and they'll be creative and they'll do something different than no other town's done. And we'll see that here. I'm, I'm fully confident that we will. <laughs> I think, you know, we've talked about this in several calls about this is a very painful and uncertain time. However, take this pause as an opportunity as well. And, you know, how do we come out of this as a community? We certainly had the past couple of years some thoughts that we were careening towards some sort of cliff that we needed to pull back from. Were there things that we can improve? Absolutely. So in this reimagining, you know, I'll use another metaphor because I love them. You know, if you're the caterpillar right now, just coming out, it sucks and it it's painful and it hurts and you're coming out and then you're the butterfly. All right. How do you fly out of this in a better way? Is there a, a chance to take this opportunity and, and, and be better and do better um, as painful as it is? Can we, can we do that? So I think a lot of people are looking to do that as well. Um, but it's going to be, it, it's very, very difficult right now. And, and uh, so we understand that. So however we yeah. can help with that. It's scary right now because some of these, some businesses won't make it. Right. right. And some some butterflies will come out and some won't. And one of my businesses might not make it. And so I'm also preparing for that, too. And I, I had a conversation today with another business owner and we both we said it in different ways. But it was um, how do we get through this year and break even without taking on a lot of debt? And then the other option was, how do we if I have to close my business, how do I close it without taking on a lot of debt? Right. right. That That's kind of the two options that a lot of us are facing and I know that's not what you're um, you're not you know working on just that but that's like the feeling of the business that you're hearing Christy that I'm trying to worry about okay if I have to close down I just don't want to have a hundred grand that I got to pay and lose my business like that's kind of what we're trying to right or, or more than a hundred grand and that's what we're hearing so much from businesses is they're scared to take on some of that debt with the PPP and the idle and trying to make sure that as much of it is forgiven as possible. And so much of that is so tough. And, you know, I think we keep saying things are just changing every day. When Congress first put this together, we were like, great, people will go back to work, they'll use the PPP, and then we're still in the shutdown. And nobody expe expe expected that at the beginning. And, you know, we're all trying to get through that and make sure that businesses can su survive. I think I've been really impressed with how innovative everybody is. Um, 
people are using Instagram to sell merchandise. Um, and Instagram has tags. People are creating online websites for the first time. Um, the chamber is collaborating with retail and others to try to see, is there some sort of virtual experience? Um, all of us are really trying to think how, like you said, how can we break even? How can we support small businesses? The last thing that we wanna see is an empty main street in December um, or again next June when, when typically people would be opening back up. Right. Yeah. I just got something today with a whole list of virtual experiences across the country. Um, I saw some cocktails with, a, you know, an artist and galleries and things like that and virtual type of things um, and live auctions and things of that sort. Some really creative ideas out there that I think would be great here. Um, I'm not concerned people about people coming back. I think Nantucket will always, people will come back to us and I, if we can keep that alive through the summer. I think, you know, that's going to be a great challenge, but um, there's an incredible amount of creative people here. Incredible. I mean, the artists and everything else on this island and creativity um, from all sectors, I think, is what's going to really help uh, get us through it because that's what you need, you know, is people who uh, don't necessarily like normal, who like to shake it up and who like to to think out of that box. So I think that's that's going to be one thing that's helpful for us. So and Christy and the chamber have been great. Um, you know, our culture and tourism department too, as well, you know, and the board, your roles as board too. I think we've all been working together. Great. You know, we talk all the time and that's been helpful too. Um, so I want people to know that too, is that we're all working together, you know, um, trying to figure this out. And that's been incredibly helpful for us too, as well. So there's one question here from Mary. Could we could we start an investor fund to take small equity stakes on companies to get them through 2020? Mary, would you like to own 20% of my coffee shop? <laughs> Is there anything like that going on or talk of that, Christy? So the chamber has been um, seeking some support through our Keep the Rock Solid campaign. Um, if you go on keeptherocksolid.com, there's information to reach out to Karen Maycumber. Um, we have been looking into the possibility of starting a small LLC and trying to find investors to do that so that we could provide um, you know, small loans or loans with a small interest rate, or maybe it would be forgivable. Um, ideas have been floating about having this be kind of an entrepreneurial fund. So it would go back into funding small businesses, or maybe it's a rainy day fund for the next economic downturn. Um, we're still very much um, in the stages of trying to create that and trying to find the investors. So if you know anybody, they can reach out to the chamber. That's great. Thank you, Christy. That, that's newer, right? That's the last couple of weeks. Yeah. So it took a little while to figure out the logistics. Um, you know, the chamber wanted to jump on it immediately and start doling out as many grants and loans as possible. Um, but there's a lot of legality um, and legal issues to go through. And so that's, that's what we've been working on. I should say Karen has been amazing, our business consultant. She's been pushing through to find a way to support small businesses. Um, we've been going through every level of federal funding, state lending, anything that we could do to bring funding to Nantucket businesses. Great, thank you, Christy. Anything else that uh, small business owners or people who are involved with small businesses or people who work in them uh, need to know uh, any resources out there that is there a webinar or something out there that you is a must watch? Yes, there's a webinar on May 4th through the SCORE Association. So they're um, a resource across the country that does free consulting for small businesses. And they're hosting a road to recovery type um, webinar. I can't think of the name off the top of my head. But it was in the chamber's e-blast this morning, and I'll make sure that it's on social media and on our website. Um, but they kind of have a toolkit of thinking about reopening and things that they've gathered for all industries. So it'll be a very helpful webinar May 4th. I think it's 9 a.m. Great. Amy, anything that you uh, want people to know or um, you want them to, whether it's a webinar or something to read, any, any help at all you can suggest? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you know, I think, you know, we're going to keep hopefully having these conversations with groups and these businesses and, and, you know, be sure that we're sharing whatever we know when we know it. Mm -hmm. um, we're not holding back on that. And, you know, we want folks to just start thinking about how their establishment looks, how their business looks, how we can help if there's something we're not thinking about. Again, some of those reservation details and things like that. 
I don't know how to run a restaurant. There's some intricacies we don't understand. Um, and so that's been a great conversation too, as well. Is it, and just to know that we're, you know, there for them and, and doing our best to kind of get them the information they need. So, but to reach out and trying to get through all these questions and things like that. Um, and we're going to probably set up, you know, one page for these restaurants and hospitality industries to go to for resources and information too, as well. So we're all getting the same information uh, together, but we'll continue to do that. Anything for you, Christy? Last, last words, we're about a half hour into this. Um, not that I can think of it. I mean, the chamber has been putting out resources. Um, webinars are Tuesday. E-Blast is always chock full of kind of what's going on around the island, federally, locally, state. Um, one of the other things uh, Governor Baker put through recently was a moratorium on evictions um, for mortgages and rentals. So that it might apply to small, you might apply as a small business. Um, there's certain regulations and guidances, but you can look into that to prevent getting evicted. Um, we're constantly putting through information about what bills are coming through from the state or federal. Um, so stay up to date with the chamber. We've also just launched a radio show, uh, The Road to Recovery, where we're interviewing, uh, Melissa Murphy is interviewing inspirational businesses that have adapted. So kind of this whole conversation has been about how do we adapt to the new normal? And we started interviewing that launch today, um, interviewing different businesses and seeing even just a small change, like N Magazine started a subscription base. They had never done that before. It's just little things of how businesses are adapting to our new normal. And what I've seen so much is our community really coming together and not even just adapting to the new normal, but pulling in the community. I heard this morning the Beat was giving out meals to other restaurant owners and that in order to do that, you have to donate to the food pantry. So the, everything they do is just like, how can we keep helping? And I know that this is such a scary time and every business owner I talk to is nervous and anxious and it's really inspiring to see all of us come together. When is the road recovery? Where do we find that? That's on trueislandradio.com slash yep. keep the rock solid. So it's part of the keep the rock solid, um, keeping businesses afloat during this time. I'm sure you'll be pushing it out um, you know, through social media and other places too and links in the, uh, newsletters and whatnot. I think that'd be really helpful to hear what other businesses are doing. That's what we're hopeful is, is so many people are afraid and hearing from others and seeing they're going through the same thing. You know, we always keep saying we're all in this together. It's it's so true. We're all, we're all in the same spot. Nobody knows more than another person. Um, we're all just trying to get through this. Well, thank you both of you. The last thing I wanted to say is the economic task force that I um, am working with you and Janet on. Uh, we're, we're getting that started this week. We worked on mission and scope and how to structure it and how to make it the most efficient for all these different sectors. And I think that's going to come in handy for the cross discipline, right? When real estate is talking to the clean industry and the clean industry is hearing from somebody else and the events committee is listening to um, uh, the retail and how, how cause, because we're all connected. It made me think of it, Christine, when you said that. So I hope this by the end of this week, we'll have uh, some meetings started and we can take these next two weeks before the next iteration of the state order, whatever uh, the governor's office is going to do and plan and work on that how that we talked about. Any uh, less, less um, or any other items before we get out of here? Um, can I say hi to my mom who's watching? I haven't seen her in months. She's texting me right now. <laughs> hi, mom. Always wanted to do that. Hi, Amy's mom. <laughs> and thank you, Handlebar, for, you know, being back. We appreciate it. Are there any other questions on the live feed? Um, one just came up. Speaking of evictions, have you had any discussion with NIR? Uh, where do they fit in? Any information coming from them? So the chamber is recommending everybody reach out to NIR individually and discuss your own lease individually. Um, the chamber hasn't taken um, an overall approach there, our landlord as well. So we're taking the same steps as everybody else. Um, but I know that's a key question that so many have. And we do have resources on the chamber webpage of how to talk to your landlord, um, whether it's NIR or anybody else, um, how to have those conversations and some resources to webinars about that. 
you know, that, and that's the tough thing everybody wants to know is what are the rules? You know, landlords and tenants want to know what's the occupancy going to be. I, I can't renegotiate a lease with you if I don't know what the parameters are. And that's what everybody is waiting on. So if we can all get our ducks in a row and, and plans, so then when we know we can, you know, we can move forward quickly. Yeah, we, 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 we're getting that question a lot too. And a lot of businesses in different sectors asking if they can have a pause for 2020, if they're allowed to, um, as far as fees and things like that. And we'll definitely work with folks on our end, but they are looking at their landlord wondering if they can do that. Cause for some, it is not worth it uh, with these restrictions. So we're certainly willing to have that discussion for pauses for the year on licenses. So. Well, thank you, Amy and Christy. Uh, any last words before we get out of here and on to our next thing? Now, thank you so much for bringing everyone together. Uh, you both have been incredibly helpful. So we appreciate that being able to get out and communicate. So thank you. Thank you, Amy, for your collaborative approach and working with all the businesses. I really yeah. appreciate that. Thank you. Thank all you. Right. We'll see you all next week. Bye. Thanks, NCDV team.